Measurement and Data Collection We will start this lecture with a brief review of the previous lecture. And the topics of this lecture are Concept of Measurement Levels of Measurement Scales Reliability of Measurement Validity of Measurement Types of Measurements Rating Scale Likert Scale and we will conclude this lecture with a summary. In the previous lecture, we learned 1. The relationship between research design and sampling design. Sampling design is a particular component of a research design. 2. The relationship between random assignment versus random sampling. Random assignment and random sampling are different procedures in research design. 3. The concepts and differences between random sampling and non-random sampling. If a sample has been collected through a non-random way, that sample becomes biased sample. Marvin Center survey example would be an example of a non-random sampling. 4. The combination of random assignment with random sampling. If we combine random assignment with random sampling, we could increase both internal and external validity of research. 5. The concept and example of sampling variation or sampling error. Sampling variation or sampling error is the variation of the sample statistic from sample to sample just by chance factors alone. 6. The simple random sampling method is a random sampling method. Key point of simple random sampling is all subjects are assigned equal chance to being selected. 7. The stratified sampling method as a random sampling method. Procedure of stratified sampling method is First, divide a population into two or more subpopulation called strata. Second, for all strata, randomly sample within the strata given even pop proportion over strata. Eight, the cluster sampling method as a random sampling method. Procedure of cluster sampling method is First, divide a population into two or more subpopulations called cluster. Second, randomly select clusters. Third, collect all subjects from that selected cluster. The definition of measurement is a systematic process of assigning numbers. Let's think about a case measuring gender. According to the above definition of measurement, we need to assign numbers onto different gender, for example, one for female and one for male, in a systematic way. There are four types of levels of measurement scales. 1. Normal scale. 2. Ordinal scale. 3. Interval scale and 4. Ratio Scale. For nominal scale, numbers are arbitrarily assigned to names or categories. In other words, swap numbers for words. This scale is used for variables that are categorical in nature, and numbers do not indicate how much of a characteristic is present. Example of this particular measurement scale would be of gender, eye color, and political affiliation. Ordinal scale uses numbers to order observations on some continuum, and the ordinal scale data does not provide information about the size of differences between adjacent steps on the scale. Examples of this particular measurement scales would be winners of a race. Interval scale assumes an interval between consecutive scores that has the same distance anywhere on the scale. In other words, equal interval scale, but reference point is arbitrary. Examples of this particular measurement scale would be the temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit. Ratio scale also assumes the distance between consecutive scores is always the same as the interval scale does. However, 
the zero point is meaningful as an endpoint. Examples of this particular measurement scale would be length, weight, time, or temperature in Kelvin. Try to identify appropriate types of measurement levels or measurement scale for below examples. Please try to find the appropriate type of measurement levels for this example. How about the back number of three runners? How about the distance between three runners? How about the distance of three runners from the starting point? Reliability of measurement means the consistency between the thing you want to measure and the thing you measured. There are many measures or indices available for capturing the reliability of measurement, but details are beyond the score of this lecture. Below pictures capture the conceptual difference between less reliable case and more reliable case. Validity of measurement is the extent to which the instrument measures what it is designed to measure. Also, this validity of measurement can be decomposed into content validity, construct validity, and criterion validity. We can better understand the difference between reliability of measurement and validity of measurement by the picture below. This picture represents one case with highly reliable but less valid measurement. Content validity of measurement implies the adequacy of content sampling. Let's see the math test example. What if a teacher writes up a final exam with all items from Chapter 1? What if a teacher writes up another final exam with three items per chapter? Which test is a better test? In other words, which measurement is a better measurement? In terms of content validity of measurement, we can say the second test would be the better one. Construct validity of measurement concerns clear definition or identification of what we want to measure. Let's see the teacher quality example. What if one measure a parent satisfaction only for teacher quality? What if one measure the student satisfaction only for teacher quality? We do know parent satisfaction or student satisfaction not exactly or sufficiently captures the teacher quality. There is a deviation between what we want to measure and what we measure. We concern the contract validity of measurement. Criterion validity of measurement concerns the relationship between measures and other criterion. Let's think about the below example. Many prior research argued reading test score and IQ test scores are highly correlated each other. Given this information, your new reading test can show the criterion validity of measurement if the score from your test is highly correlated with other criterion, which is the IQ test score. There are several types of measurement, i.e. scaling methods. For example, rating scale, Likert scale, achievement test, Gutman scale, Thurstone scale, are popular types of scaling methods. In this lecture, we will review Rating Scale and Likert Scale. Rating scales contain items related to a concept, phenomenon, activity, or physical object. The respondent is asked to select a descriptor on a scale that most closely approximates his or her assessment of whatever is described in the item. The basic feature of any rating scale is that it consists of a number of categories. These are usually assigned integers. A Likert scale contains a number of points on a scale, quite often five, but typically odd number. The points have designations 
such as strongly agree to strongly disagree. Likert scaling is a bipolar scaling method, measuring either positive and negative response to a statement. Sometimes, Likert scales are used in a forced choice method where the middle option of neither agree nor disagree is not available. In this lecture, we learned 1. Concept of measurement 2. Levels of measurement scales 3. Reliability of measurement 4. Validity of measurement 5. Types of measurements, scaling methods. 6. Rating scale. And 7. Likert scale.